There is nothing more frustrating than when you're sewing a project and there is definitely something wrong, either with the stitch or something keeps happening with your machine. I'm Jan Howell and we're going to be troubleshooting three of the most common sewing machine problems. This is lesson number seven in the Sew Simple series. Many of the remedies and solutions are really more simple than you think. Let's get started. When you're trying to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on, I recommend getting a bunch of just fabric scraps, little pieces of fabric that you can just test the stitch without having to use a whole big piece of fabric or ruin your project. So whenever you're getting a poor stitch, something's not going right, most of the time, 90% of the time, if you'll just re-thread your machine, that will a lot of the time just take care of the problem. Another tip and piece of advice is don't mess with the tension on your machine until you've tried all of these other things. Because once you get the tension off, it's harder to get that back to where it needs to be. So don't mess with the tension quite yet. We'll cover that in another tutorial, but for these basic things, most likely it's not the tension. So one of the first things we're going to go over is bird nesting. You may be wondering, what is bird nesting? Well, have you ever seen this happen on the underside of your fabric? So the stitching will look normal on top of the fabric, but underneath you've got all this going on and we certainly don't want that. There's a few things that can be going on. So one thing you can, that usually works, is if there's an issue on the underside, it's usually something with the top side of the machine, meaning the threading or the tension, where if there's something, the stitch on the top side is going, there's something wonky going on, it's probably something with your bobbin something on the under part of the machine. So kind of interesting. The first thing that you'll want to check is just to re-thread your machine. We have gone over the specifics of threading your machine in previous classes, but just a reminder that every machine is going to be a little bit different the way you thread it, and your sewing machine will come with a guide on how to do that. So one thing I find is I want you to just unthread the machine. So lift up your presser foot, if it's not already, and just take your thread out and let's just start. So reminding you that you need to use the correct size topper on your thread. Make sure that's put in the machine right. And most machines will even have just a, a guide on the top. And I'm just going to follow that. And one thing you want to make sure that it's coming down through that this is where the tension is, you wanna make sure that that is clicking in place and just follow your guidelines. And thread the needle. So if you're lucky enough to have an automatic needle threader, you can just do that. If it's threaded correctly, you should be able just to pull the thread and it should slide and glide without any catching or pulling. When I put the presser foot down, it will be tight. We, so to just to make sure that it's pulling through the tension correctly, lift up the presser foot and pull and it should glide really nicely. The next thing you'll want to check is the bobbin, making sure it's inserted correctly and there's nothing going on with the bobbin. So this is a top loading machine and most likely you'll have an image that will show you where and how the thread needs to be threaded in. But if it doesn't, the thread should be loading from the back and not from the front of the bobbin. Do you see that? So we'll make sure that the thread is pulling from the back side of the bobbin when you place it in. And we'll just thread that through where it's supposed to go. If you have, if your bobbin is a front loading bobbin, like this machine, you want to make sure that the bobbin is inserted correctly as well. So in a bobbin case, you want to have the thread on the bottom of the bobbin like this, 
when you insert it in and then the bobbin itself has a tension on it so there can be some issues there but just click that in place and make sure that that flows freely if it catches or is it pulls tight then take it out and put it back in and make sure that's clicked in place to bring the bobbin thread up to the top before you start sewing just turn your hand wheel towards you and see how that brings the bottom thread up I usually just take my scissors or something and pull and slide that through so it I have both of the threads and with my presser foot lifted that should flow really freely and smoothly if it doesn't there's probably something going on still so and re-thread it so it should pull really nice and smooth another thing you'll want to check is to make sure that you're sewing with the correct size needle for the project and the fabric that you're sewing on i have a sewing machine needle guide that you can print out that will give you all the details of which type and what size of sewing machine needle that you'll need to be using. It will make a huge difference on the quality of your seam and stitch. Another thing that's a kind of annoying, not a really a big deal, but this nesting and this bunching up of the thread at the start of your seam. It's not a big deal, but it doesn't look very nice. And it happens a lot and let me just show you how you can keep that from happening when you're starting a new seam make sure the thread is threaded through the presser foot and on the first two stitches if you'll just hold those threads so put your presser foot down and then take the threads and just hold them back for just the few first few stitches And you can see that there is no nesting another issue is your thread keeps breaking while you're sewing there are a few things that can be going wrong the first one is again you'll want to re-thread your machine it may be being double wrapped somewhere or caught somewhere that you you can't see so just re-thread it again and then Again, check your bobbin, make sure that there's nothing catching there. And it may be that you're just using old thread. Thread does have a shelf life. I have found that when I use some of the threads that I have inherited from my grandma or something, that in fact, they do break more easily. I like to use just a multi-purpose, all-purpose thread that has some synthetic and cotton it just depends on what you're sewing so if you're um, you want to match the thread with the content of the fabric the next problem we're going to go over is your needle breaking obviously you want to make sure that you're removing the pins there have been many times i hate to admit that when i'm sewing i forget oh i just don't want to bother with taking out the pin and sure enough the needle will hit the pin and it will break the needle so just i mean that's no brainer take out your pins when you're sewing especially when you're using the serger the next thing that can happen is if you're using a different presser foot and you're using let me just show you See how this presser foot has some room that I can use a back and forth zigzag stitch and the needle's not going to hit anything. But if I were to put like this zipper foot in and try to sew a straight stitch, that needle would come down right on that center metal piece and obviously break the needle. You'll want to check and make sure that you don't have a bent needle. Sometimes it's not real obvious, but if you've been sewing on something that's really thick or a dense fabric and you may just have a slight bend in the needle and that will create some problems and the, the needle will eventually break and you don't want it sewing down on the metal plate either 
if it's been a while since you've checked your needle, check your needle. And if it's been a while since you've even replaced a needle, replace your needle with a new one. If your needle's breaking, you may want to check and see that you have the right size of needle again for your project. Most of my projects, I just use a universal needle. Depending on the, the thickness of the fabric and the weight of the fabric, the lower number, the thinner fabric, higher numbers are thicker fabric like denim and if you are sewing on denim you'll want to get a denim needle that will help obviously if you're trying to sew thick material with a very thin needle it's going to break really obvious and one more thing to check is to make sure the needle is put in the right way in your machine your needle some needles in some machines will have just a round shank, but most of the needles will have a, an edge on the top that's flat. That flat edge will go to the back of where you insert the needle. Twisty that you'll loosen and tighten for your needle. Some machines will have an actual screwdriver that you'll use, but most of them will just have a hand turn. So I'm going to find the flat end, flat edge of my needle put it to the back and insert it. Make sure that it's inserted all the way in and then tighten it. Just one more quick tip before we end this tutorial is to when you change out your needles for different projects, if they're still good, you only use them just a little bit, don't just stick them back in your drawer because you are going to forget what type of needle it is. I do it all the time until I finally decided that I would label them so that when I need to use it again, I will know what it is. So this is a top stitching needle. I wouldn't have known that and it probably would have just, I would have just had to throw it away because I didn't know what it was. They do engrave what size it is on the needle, but you have to get out a magnifying glass really to be able to read it. So just another little tip. So I hope that was helpful. Pretty much you can take care of most of your issues by rethreading your machine. Go through these steps. And if there are still issues and you haven't been using your machine for a while, it is helpful to take it into the shop and have them do a just a maintenance on your machine. It's good to do that once a year if you sew a lot anyway. If you don't sew a lot, you probably don't do that, need to do that as frequently, but they can tweak it and make sure that there aren't any like just fibers and stuff stuck into the machine affecting the way that you're sewing. So go through those troubleshooting tips, try them out first. Sewing doesn't need to be frustrating. There's things you can do to take care of these issues reach out if you need to if you have questions be sure to send me a note check out the other lessons in the so simple series have fun sewing make sure you're subscribing to the channel we'll see you in the next class